So here we are in Procreate, um, but you can do what we're going to do today in any drawing app that you want. Um, it will work for anything. Uh, I'm working currently on a 6,000 by 6,000 pixel document, which is kind of my normal size for working on just any old thing. Um, I like to often work in square just so it fits well on Instagram, but that's just me. Um, and what we're going to do uh, is we're going to draw a person's head and then we're going to put a chicken on the top of it. And so for this and for the way that we're going to draw, we're not going to do a whole lot of sketching. We're just going to use a pen, a pen like brush um, and we're going to uh, just draw it. Just go for it. If we don't like it. We can erase it. But drawing with a with a pen instead of uh, sketching out with a pencil gives you different results. It makes you uh, kind of commit to things and just kind of throw caution to the wind sometimes and just draw. So that's what we're going to do for this time. Not that I mind drawing with a pencil. Um, I do that a lot too. But sometimes to get a certain quality, it's fun to just draw with directly with a pen tool. And so I'm using the Frankwell 2.0 brush in Procreate. Um, but use any 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 pen type brush, one that's going to give you a hard uh, hard line, and we're going to just draw with some a black color, and we're going to start drawing. But first, we have to make a decision before we do this, and we we have to decide um, what the person thinks about having a chicken on their head. So, are they happy about it? Is this upsetting to them? Are they confused? Uh, I think I'm going to go for uh, generally just kind of pleasantly okay with it. That's what I'm going to go with. But you guys, if you're following along, you can you can pick whatever you want. Um, so you have to think about how the chicken feels about it, or is that a different uh, idea altogether? The chicken should always be indifferent, no matter what. So just keep that in mind too. That's kind of, that's kind of, I, I know you're kind of, pre kind of, chicken. yeah, yeah. You want to make sure you get a chicken that's even keeled. <laughs> yep. So uh, I'm going to just start. Uh, you always want to start with drawing the eye first, just drawing an eye. Um, I'm going to start with an eye, but we'll see. We'll see. I have to see how thick the, the, uh, whoa, stop that. That is old. Okay. Um, so let's see. Eh, that's okay. I'm going to take my thickness down a little so I have more room and so I can zoom in a little. And so we'll just start with an eye right there. And we'll add a little shading underneath that. And then let's just put another eye over here. Get a little shading there. And then with some pupils and then we'll give him a nose. I've decided this is a him, but you can go with whatever direction you want to go. Um, and this is only the first part because we're going to be making this into a woodcut style, but that's after we get the drawing done. Uh, let's see. So we need to give him mouth. We'll start with that kind of a mouth and of course teeth and then I'm going to put a little shading under that top lip there just for fun and I don't want this guy to be too excited or anything so that always means just kind of straight eyebrows is what you want to go with. I'm going to switch and scale this down a little so that I have some more room to work with. All right. Of course, that means that I might want to scale the size of my brush down a little. All right, so this guy needs a side of a head, obviously, which would include an ear. So we'll put an ear in there and then we'll come down and a bit of a cheek is always good. And then we'll Kind of do the same on the other side. If you want to uh, go crazy, you could put the bottom of a shirt down there. I always like to put a little shading on one side just to 
I don't know, give it a sense that there might be a light source in this strange cartoony world. And then I'm just gonna bring that down. But for this, the most important part is the head, of course. So you don't have to build out the rest of the body too much. And now we have a decision to make. What kind of a what kind of hair on top of a head would work well for this? So I think that I'm gonna go with something that resembles like the maybe the bottom of some curtains or something. So we'll draw that across, but then I'm just gonna go straight up. Oh yeah, and I even like it because, you know, I, I can tell right now that my hair is asymmetrical and it's shifted to one side, but I, I kind of, I think that, that that's not bad. Most of us are asymmetrical in some way, except for George, it's very odd. He is perfectly symmetrical. I'm gonna put a little shading under here to give the weight to the bottom of this hair. You know, it's kind of sitting on that head. Maybe we'll add little shading marks along there. Let's uh, zoom out here and see. Okay, so I'm gonna move this down some so I have some room for the chicken. So let's see, the chicken, of course, you also wanna start with uh, an eye. So we'll start with an eye right there and we'll do a little shading and then now, <clears throat> the kind of chickens that, that we want to draw here, they, they do not, not only are they asymmetrical, but their eyes are not symmetrical. Most chickens have asymmetrical eyes. So we want to, we want to accentuate that. So we'll draw the other eyes smaller. And another thing you want to do with chickens, um, because chickens are so smart, you kind of want to give them a look of, um, not quite focused, so maybe the eyes aren't quite pointed in the same direction. And then let's put some feathers up here. And then we'll kind of come around. This is going to be a plump chicken because it's it's probably warming this guy's head in some way. So we'll come down and just kind of give it a bit of plumpness. And then once we get down there, we can start coming straight across because the top of this guy's head is, is flat. And that's what makes it such a good chicken perch. And then I'm gonna put some um, feet. I'll put some chicken feet on there. And then continue the chicken butt along the bottom and let's give it a beak. So we know that it is clearly a chicken. Yeah, and maybe, maybe it's a little bit tired. And then um, I believe chickens have eyebrows. I'm not positive about that, but I'm pretty sure they have eyebrows. If you want to have your chicken eyebrowless, that is fine as well. Um, but personally, I would give it eyebrows. It's kind of sad without them. Okay, and then we got to do some wings. So we'll put some wings in there and we'll put some other wings right, or another wing right there. And maybe a little bit of shading. And then, I don't know, we could go a little bit thicker underneath the feet here, um, I don't know. I'm gonna add just a few little bit of shading marks on the chicken, just because we don't want him left out. Uh, I don't know about your guys' chickens, but mine is looking quite stunning. And um, ready for action is kind of a phrase that comes to mind when I look at my chicken. But, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna judge you if your chicken is not quite like that. Then I'm gonna move this down a little and not bad, not bad. That the chicken kind of looks terrified that he's on top of the guy's head. Yeah, yeah, it, it happens. 
it's not quite the nest that the chicken was uh, expecting. But he looks safe too. He doesn't look yeah. good at all. Yeah. He looks <clears throat> balanced. Yes, he's he's not going anywhere. He picked a good sturdy head, I think. Yeah, yeah. Flat-headed people tend to attract chickens. And uh, if anybody knows this, it's Doug. I mean, he's had a lot of experience with this. All right. Um, so once we have our, our line drawing down, we are ready to start doing a woodcut-esque uh, treatment for it. And so what we're going to do is, in whatever program you're using, you're going to make a new layer. So you have that above your drawing. And then you are going to go ahead and fill that layer with black. So now you have a layer with black. And then you are going to adjust its opacity just enough so you can start to see the drawing underneath. Not too much, not all the way, not all the way this way, just enough so you can see what 90% maybe or even less. You just want to just barely be able to see what's going on. Then you are going to switch to a, an eraser. And you want that eraser to be, it can be the same pen you just used. You can pick another one. You want it to be hard edge. You can do this technique with really any brush, but if you want that woodcut feel to it, you're going to want a hard edged brush. Oftentimes a calligraphy brush can work really good and inking, inking brushes work really good. I'm just going to use the same brush that I have here and just switch. It's going to be erasing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start to carve away all of the black that you filled in around the line work you did. Now, there's a lot of different looks that you will give this depending on how you do this. You could do this with lots and lots of really tiny little, little things like this, and that's gonna give you a certain look. You can do it instead with, oh, also, you wanna go back, back at any point, you can just fill the layer again. Um, but you can also do this with much thicker and bolder cuts away like that and go around and do everything. I would suggest your first time doing it, uh, it, it sometimes the look of it doesn't come out that great if you aren't used to doing this, if you use a really small one and then sometimes it can get a little chunky, really, really large. So I would tend to start with a medium sized brush maybe one a little bit thicker than whatever you drew it with. And you also have a lot of, uh, another thing that's gonna really change what this looks like is, is the direction that you do it. Uh, I personally like to do it just sort of around the form of the line work, but you can also like you could say on his nose, just go straight across like that and carve it out and then go across the face and kind of keep it straight. And that will give it a certain look too. I, I like to just go around and be a little more haphazard, but any of those ways is great. And you don't want to cut into the line. Do not go over the line work that you drew and you want to leave a little space around it. And you, you're going to get these, it's going to make the line work have a lot more interesting quality to it too, because it's got these, you know, it's not, it's not, it's got a rougher edge there and it's got more energy to it. And then even the shading here, I'm going to go in and just kind of cut around the line work. And then I'll show you in a second as I get a little more done, then you can check on how it's looking. And then all this space out here, you want to cut that away too. Just carve it away. And then if you ever want to check on how it's really looking, you just change your opacity, oops, change your opacity all the way back up and you can sort of see how it's starting to look. It'll look much better after you've carved away more than what we have so far. Um, and that's, that's what you do. And then uh, the cool thing at, uh, after this is that then you can also then lay color underneath it a little more opacity here 
There we go. And if you want to, if you make a mistake and you want to get rid of it, you can just get a black brush and paint over where you carved away and then recarve it um, away again later. And if you finish it and you want to start over, you can make a new fill layer and try a different size brush or try being a little more intentional with where you're carving it away. This works really well for it. Say you have a logo or some type and you want to give it a more organic look to it. You can type it out and then carve away around it like this and it will make it look a lot less computer generated and just give it more character. But yeah, the size of your brush and the direction you make your strokes plays a huge part in how this looks. This is also something that once you're done with it, if you ever need it at a much higher resolution, this will vector vectorize really well. So if you convert it to a vector file and then you can scale it to whatever size you want because the black and white just converts very nicely. But you definitely want to try and not go over and into the line work that you drew. If you do that, um, you'll start to lose what, what, what you're trying to show. So let me, I'm going to carve just a little bit more away from this and then I'll, then I'll get rid of the opacity and you'll see, and you know, you'll have to decide how much of these little specks you want to get rid of. Um, I would just maybe wait for a cleanup phase until after you've gotten most of it done and then you can decide and you can duplicate your layer and get rid of some until it's the way you want it but if you get rid of you know all of it you're losing some of the character of using this technique so you just want to try some different different amounts of getting rid of like so here in the hair i've got all these little specks here and i could get rid of all of them but that will also get rid of the interesting quality that this is giving the piece too. But then if you have too much, it can look kind of dirty, messy. You can lose what it is that you've drawn and it's not as easy to tell what's going on. And if you are trying to do this with a mouse and not a drawing tablet pen or a Cintiq pen or an Apple pencil, um, Good luck. That's not as fun. You can do it. When I worked at Microsoft back in the early 90s, I was doing lots and lots of digital artwork, drawing it all with a mouse. And it was a little painful. Okay, so I'm getting enough now to where I can Turn my opacity back up and you can start to see the kind of the feel that this is getting. And we'll turn it back down again and keep going. I can see that, you know, when I turned that all the way back up, I could see that there's a part in the hair that I haven't carved away right here that's making an unintentional line that I don't want. So I'm gonna I'm gonna carve that away right there. Carve a little bit of that too. Continue with the face. If anyone at any point wants to unmute and ask a question or just talk about anything, you're more than welcome to. I have a question. What inspired you to start doing things with this technique? Um, I'm trying to remember. I started doing this years and years ago, and I think it was just looking at traditional woodcut 
illustrations and real or and and artwork and really liking the quality that it was giving things and it's really you know removing what is it removing positive space i don't know you're carving it away and you're you know and just the act of removing and doing things like that it's funny that how much technique changes what it is the artwork that you're making um and also how much it still looks like you did it like you know we'll all do this and everyone's piece will look a little different and everyone's piece will look like you did it but it will also look very different than the way you drew it and have a different feel to it one thing i love about digital art is how much experimentation you can do and just trying out things and so that's where this technique came from was just playing around It's also fun to try, try different brushes with it too. Um, another thing, if you really get going with something like this, is to look up woodcut illustrations, get examples of them, and then take a drawing that you've done, but looking at someone else's woodcut illustration and trying to match the way that they made their cuts and the way that they made their lines, but doing it on your drawing. Um, you can learn a whole lot doing that and, it, you know, take your art in a way, in a direction you may not have thought of. And you're learning from, you know, you might look at somebody who's been doing woodcut illustration work or doing woodcut art, you know, for 50 years and then you get to benefit from all the stuff that they learned and the ways they figured out how to do their line work and their carving away and stuff. And so Brian, ultimately, yes. ultimately you're just using the black drawing you did in the beginning as a template. It won't be a part of the artwork in the end. Correct. It will be gone. You can delete it or whatever, but yeah, you will just be using this, this layer for the final. Yep. Okay. All it is is a guide. And I'm doing this r really quickly. Um, and that will change the quality of what this looks like. And I don't mean quality in a way that it's good or bad, but just how it feels when you look at it. Um, and I do like to do this too in a more um, thought out way or a more intentional way uh, or where I'm just sitting there and I just do it a lot slower and just the speed by which you do it gives it a different feel um, and neither one is good or good or bad what's you know a benefit to doing it fast like this is it has a lot of energy and it you know it just kind of feels like it has motion to it or it just it's got an organic feel to it taking your time you can get a lot more precise you can plan out like a pattern to the way you're doing it and that can look good but it can also look you know a little more stiff sometimes um i find both ways can make some great stuff um i also find that doing this kind of stuff is like therapy it's just kind of fun to do and it puts your mind in a certain space kind of calms things down same with just doing like pen and ink or, or line drawing um, like Doug, Doug here does a lot of line work art and, and my gosh, is it, it's just, I don't know. I find it very therapeutic to be doing that stuff. I don't know if Doug does. Do you Doug? Oh, you're muted. I do. I find it very relaxing. Yeah. Yep. I agree. And the one piece of advice that I'd like to offer along with this or any technique that you tr attempt, especially the first couple of times, don't be afraid of it. And the only thing that is taking a risk is the paper or the file. Yep. Exactly. I was going to say, half, we've, we found that half of the uh, appeal of the micro meetups, people just like to watch other people drawing really detailed stuff. <laughs> yep. 
like yeah, I enjoy yeah. watching people like sort of get into the technique. Yep. All goes back to those PBS painting shows. It's true. It is true. Brian, I have a question. Yes. You stated earlier that sometimes you will vectorize or convert this from a pixel image to a vector image. Yes. What software are you using to convert that? I used to actually believe it or not i used to do that in photoshop and there was a way to do it in photoshop but now um i i, I just do it in illustrator illustrator live does, trace yes it does okay. that Im image trace and it does a, a very nice job of course the higher the resolution you can give it to begin with the better um but yeah it it, it does a it does a real nice job And then for those of you that aren't familiar with what making it into a vector file, if I keep zooming in on this, eventually you start to see the pixels that's made up, that the image is made up of. If you have a vector file, you can keep zooming and keep zooming and zooming and you'll never see those pixels. And so what that means is that like if I was to print this up wall size or you know really huge, when you look at it and you walk up to it, you're going to see all these pixels. But if it's a vector file, I can print it at whatever size I want. It'll never, you'll never see it. I can scale it up really big. I can zoom in and crop. I can do whatever. Um, the downside to vector stuff is that it's harder to have, like natural media brushes, eh, they aren't going to work that great. Uh, in a vector format. It's just, it can't handle that much variation, but black and white and limited color palettes, it does really good with. And you know, right now you might be tempted to say, okay, you know, I can just take my fill tool and fill in all this color. Well, no, I want, at least for right now, I want all of the little bits and pieces that I'm missing to be there because it gives this, you can see this flow of, I don't know, this motion kind of going and emerging around what I've drawn and I want to keep that. And you'll see that when you look at woodcut illustrations, you'll, you'll see the kind of stuff that's going on around it just from the technique of doing it this way. And then I think after we're done doing that, we'll start, we'll add a, a color, a color layer to this. Brian, just to give when you first that. started researching this stuff, Mm -hmm. Who did you look at? Um, so I was looking most like one of my all time favorite artists. And it's kind of a funny thing that he is one of my biggest influences because his what he draws and how he does it looks nothing like what I do. But um, the, the artist Durr absolutely love his work um and i love the techniques that he uses so uh and he does woodcut some woodcut stuff and some engraving stuff engraving is very similar to this too where you're engraving in a metal plate and, and, and printing stuff so he would do these engravings and these woodcuts that were just awesome and i liked the quality of them even though it, and and what's great is i uh, you can apply that to something that looks nothing like that. So, you know, I like, I, I would, I'll do pen and ink illustrations and I'll be like thinking about what Durer was doing when he was figuring out his line work. And I'm drawing, you know, a silly, a goofy, a dog with wings coming out of his butt flying along through the clouds. And he was doing these classic, you know, mythology and biblical illustrations and all this other stuff. Um, so yeah, it's kind of cool that way. Now I like, can, Durr yeah. had one. Durr had one picture of a dog with wings on his butt. But oh, might, did he? Uh, yeah, it might be lost. I think it's hard to say. Yeah, lost to the ages. So I can see here now that, um, like the the bottom where I, I think I want the shirt to continue all the way down to the bottom, and I've already cut that away. So I can just go back in and add black back to this area. And then I can car 
carve that away again, but leave it going all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Anybody else, who else is, 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 works on an iPad? Don't you just love that double tap to switch to the eraser? I like that. It, it's a great way of, of getting around the fact that there's no eraser on the other end of the Apple Pencil. So Doug, do you do, you do everything on a Cintiq? No, I'm left-handed. And so I still use an old style Intuos Wake ah, up right. So because the you, being you don't handed my big old fat chunky fist lays right where I want to see. Yep. So you you are completely used to the kind of the disconnect of drawing one place and looking somewhere else to see where your drawing is happening. Absolutely. Yep. I, I have uh, uh, some other friends that they, they that it just works for them. And actually, you get to sometimes you get to where it's kind of nice not to have your hand obscuring what you're drawing. Yep. Same with digital sculpting. If you're sculpting and you're trying to sculpt, and your hand is going right up over where you're trying to trying to do something. Um, okay. So now I've gotten to where I've carved away most everything, and I'm going to go and I'm going to turn my opacity all the way up so I don't see any of the background drawing so I can zoom in I don't have that and now I can decide if I want to clean any of this up on its own and I'm going to get rid of some of the really tiny bits here and there but I kind of I kind of like the feel of all the stuff going on around it and I might get rid of some of his unibrow there Just kind of clean up some edges, smooth out a little bit. Now on his pupil here, I can see that that just it's not round enough, so it's making it look kind of weird. I'm just gonna kind of round that out. There we go. That looks much better. And you'll find as you do this that, especially when you're first doing it, you're going to probably clean up too much. Um, I'm going to, what I would suggest is that as you're in a cleanup stage is that you duplicate the layer that you're doing the cleanup on so that you can then kind of go in and clean up. And then if it's too much and you've gotten rid of things you didn't want to get rid of, you can just go right back to the layer that you had before. So I'm going to go through and clean up too much probably, or maybe I'll like, maybe I'll like it that way. I mean, you can go in and clean up almost everything, but the, just the line work that you had, um, or you know the main line work and not all the extraneous stuff and that can actually look really interesting and cool as well. I found that um, when I've done some logo work that sometimes that works better for a logo where you don't want as much of this extra stuff all around um, and you just want to be able to see the, the graphic form better but you still want that really cool you know, I mean, look at the, the line work now on this is way different than what I originally drew. Kind of got some thick and chunkiness to it and a lot of unevenness to it. So I'm going to make, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to make a version of this with no, you know, much less of the extraneous stuff just so I have it. And then I can decide whether I like it or not. And then what you can do too, see, now that we've erased this, we don't even have to change the layer style if we don't want to, to be able to see what's underneath it because it's been erased. So anything I draw underneath this is gonna show up in all the white areas or any of the color that I wanna lay in. Now here is, here's a case in point where I would, I could, since I'm getting rid of all of this, I could just kind of go and select a big area and then come up and just hit clear and get rid of a bunch of it at once. I think I'll do that over here too. Clear.
yeah, like I was saying, like if you're doing a logo or a type, um, you know, typing in a finding an interesting font and typing it in and then going around and doing it like this gives it that hand handmade feel to it. Makes it look less perfectly computer generated. And it's just so interesting how carving away and so take, you know, instead of adding adding in the line, you're carving away the outside of the line and changes so much how it looks. It's the the approach. Which is again one reason there's so many options with digital stuff. That's partly why I like using it so much is because I can change things up and experiment so much with it so easily. And yet look what we're doing. We're emulating an art form that is thousands and thousands of years old. So I don't mind this look either. Where I put that out of the base layer. There we go. So I can see here. Cut away too much. If you add some in, you may want to go back and then carve away a little more just because it can stand out and not look quite right. If you go back to adding positive instead of taking it away. So here's the difference. Um, and I, I like both. I think I like it better with all the, the carving lines personally, but that's just me. I can see if I was to keep and use this version, I would probably, I, I don't like all this space down here, so I'd probably go in and add some stripes on this guy or something, but okay. So let's say I like this one. Uh, I do think that I'm going to just to make sure that these shading lines read, get rid of that right there. Um, I am going to add some color to this. So uh, any new layer I make, I'll just make a new layer. And if I put that layer underneath the layer that I had there, uh, anything I do on this layer is gonna show up. So let's just, if you, uh, I don't, you know, if you use uh, Procreate, I have to give a shout out to the Woodland Wonderland brush set. I absolutely love it. It was made for doing children's book illustrations and it's got a lot of really fun and great brushes. So if you want to play around with those sometimes or get that. It has gouache brushes and funky pencil brushes and all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to use one of the gouache brushes there. And you can just start painting in here, or you could fill the whole canvas and then start painting. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna pick a good color. Uh, I like the color orange, and that's kind of what I'm on. So maybe I'll start with that. And I'll just fill this layer. And there it's orange. And now I can say, okay, this is gonna be a white-ish chicken. And I'll start painting in for the chicken. If I was smart, I would have made another new layer and started painting over this in case I wanted to change the background layer, but eh, we're just gonna roll with it. So there's that. I'm gonna grab a much brighter, well, not much, but somewhat brighter one for the eyes so that they stand out a little more lightly there and maybe i'll take my orange down into the reds a little more and uh, pick a slightly darker color and try that for the beak and then maybe we'll add some highlights there um, i like to add a little shading in here so I'll grab a darker version of that. Kind of come in there. 
but you can, yeah, you could do like a watercolor works really watercolor brushes work really nicely under this. Um, but so do, so does like flat and graphic stuff. So let's say I wanted to make a new layer and I'm going to start coloring in the chicken and this chicken is going to be yellow and I'm going to pick, I'll just go back to my pen brush because it's quick and easy. If I wanted to just do flat color behind it and I wanted it to kind of come out from the edges of where I've drawn for a more kind of flat and graphic look, this technique holds up really well using that as well. So you can go in and, you know, shade and color underneath this. One thing you got to be careful of is, of course, don't use colors that get too dark because you want to keep the line work that you spent all this time making it look like a woodcut. You want to keep that visible. So if I went and started using dark lines, that's not going to work. But you can create a much more, you know, graphic-oriented piece like this. I could go in and say, okay, and this guy, let's see, get the orange. So um, maybe this guy has more reddish hair. I don't know. Just kind of go in here. And I'm intentionally being chunky with this one. Oof, that's some that's some hair. Uh, let's give the chicken some orange feet. And then the eyes, of course. Oh, not bloodshot. <sighs> Knocking in those colors. And let's give him some complexion here. So yeah, you can do, again, you can do highly rendered color under this. You can do really flat and graphic color like this. Uh, just the, the one thing to be aware of is going too far into your shadows and your darks. Um, it's going to make it kind of, it's going to fight with what you've got going on. His nose needs to have more color in it. There we go. And then let's see, he's... Kind of fashion. Wow, look at that. I'm going and I'm using an analogous color palette. Can anybody tell me what that means? And Doug, you can't answer because I know you know the answer. What is an analogous color scheme? Come on. They're colors that are next to each other on a color wheel. Yes, very good. Not only that, I've I went to art school too. Yep. I'm a big fan of analogous color schemes. So that's where you're picking colors that are, you know, on the same side of the color wheel. Um, they just tend to naturally harmonize well and you aren't gonna get anything that clashes. And if you do, if you are using colors that are along there and you do want something to clash, you would come over here and you would snag something as directly across from the middle of that as you can get and then that will stand out. I could make the background color this and then this whole thing would really pop. I suppose I should now that I've said that. There we go. And boom. Beautiful. Look at that. It's gorgeous. So anyway, that would be if I was doing it graphically. And then, you know, this is, I'm going to just continue to kind of noodle away at this one. Uh, some more subdued. Brian, I got to duck out, but thank All you right, so man. much. Yeah, thanks for sitting in. Maybe you should do one of these sometime. Maybe. Yep, cool. Everybody thanks, have Doug. a good night. Do it, See you, Doug. man. Holy cow, it's already been an hour. Christ. You're just, you're just mesmerizing. I guess that must be it. I am mesmerizing. The, we're staring at the chicken's eye. It's hypnotizing us. There you go.
<laughs> but even look at the weird, the interesting shapes and the, the quality of the line there. That would never happen if I just drew that out. You would never, and I would never think to, you know, have a little piece hanging out there and the circle of the eye to look like that. No way, man. I would draw it much more round. But it gives, it gives it that nice look to it. Maybe I'll give this a little shading along the bottom. Shading on the hair. I really, for those of you that have followed along, I really want to see what the heck you've made. George, are we going to allow them to share their screens at some point? Uh, if we have crazy volunteers, absolutely. All right. If anybody wants to share anything at any point. Even if you hate it. Even if you hate it, you could still share it. So Brian, what are the advantages that you think that you use Procreate instead of something else like Illustrator or um, Photoshop? Because it's designed for touch, I can move around in it really quickly. Uh, I can move around it. So when I go back to Photoshop now, Photoshop feels a little clunky um, with all the drop, you know, all the menus and all the stuff sticking out all over the place. And, you know, so I think it's, it's more efficient for just, just drawing and painting um, and just moving in and out and, and you're drawing right on the screen. And then also the fact that it's, part, it's, you know, it's on the iPad so I can sit on the couch or in the car or anywhere. It, it, it's the first time I feel like I've had a digital sketchbook, except that it's got a full art studio in it that I can just take and, and go anywhere. Um, and yeah, I, I, and I just, I like the interface and then the, the Apple pencil is the best feel of a digital stylus that I've ever seen and used. I mean, the, I, I, the Wacoms are pretty good. Uh, the Cintiqs are pretty good, but I like the, I think the pencils got them, got them beat. Um, really the biggest thing that I don't like about it is that I hate the iPad's file system. Moving, saving files and stuff can be a real pain. Sometimes it's just not, not as good, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just, find that it's the closest thing like I like uh, I I have always drawn with sharpie pens on on notepads and stuff and that's been my preferred way to draw like if I'm going to illustrate a kid's book I'll draw it out there first and then scan it in and then do it in Photoshop just because I don't know but then with the iPad I just completely switched over and I can draw it just as well on the iPad as I could with a sharpie on real paper and get that same feel and stuff so yep okay. yep 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 yeah and even like using the you know photoshop is on the ipad now um but procreate because it was from this beginning made to work on a touch screen is just much more pleasant to use uh, Photoshop on the iPad is pretty great because your Creative Cloud documents, it just saves right to it. Now that, I do like. Yeah, and then you can just like jump right on your computer and open it if you need to. Yep. Yep. Here, what I, what I, have, what I end up having to do is when I finish doing something, I have to export it out to OneDrive or Google Drive and then I can get to it. And I still will save these out and then go on my PC and use, uh, like, if I'm doing a children's book layout or something, I'll put it in InDesign. Or I'll adjust a few things in Photoshop if I need to. Or I find that um, sometimes if I want to add a paper texture to something, um, I can do, I'll do that in Photoshop. Although you can do that in here, too. Um, oh, one other thing I forgot to show you that you can do now that we have this as its own layer. So I've been coloring this, I can, and you can do this in Photoshop stuff too, is if I lock the alpha on that layer, 
uh, then I can say I want to make the line work a dark brown instead of black. If I block that alpha, I can now fill that layer and then it will be dark brown. Yeah, it does the same thing as pixel lock in Photoshop. Yep. Yeah. Yes, Leah Zink. So that's handy, very... another handy thing to have that, uh, have, having carved all that away. How, how do you lock the alpha again? I missed that. Okay, so if you if you click, go to the layer and you click on the icon for the layer or you tap on it, you'll see an option there for alpha lock. Um, oh, okay. And, and then, then like... no matter what you do, it's not going to go outside of what you've already drawn. If you tap alpha lock. Oh. Yep, so like if I turn alpha lock on now and then I take a let's say I take a bright green brush and I'm only picking this because I know it's going to be ugly and I start drawing on this you see it only goes on that part okay yep on the part that I've already drawn Ugh. <laughs> gross <laughs> okay awesome. yep you can get procreate brushes too that will simulate like paper textures and things and you just kind of stamp them on that's useful too. All right, what color should I make this guy's shirt? And it's not gonna be that green. I'm thinking yellow. That's what I'm thinking. But we'll see. If I don't like it, I'll switch it to something else. Ooh, and I'm not using... Nobody corrected me as I was using the wrong brush for filling these things in. I can't believe you people. So Wrong brush in that I was using a hard edge brush, but when I started up here, see, I'm using a brush that's got some texture and tooth to it. But then as I was shading in here, I was using my pen brush, which is hard edged. So now I have to go in and soften these edges out a little, just for consistency sake. There we go. Same on the face. All right, does anybody want to share what they've, what they've done? Anyone? Hey, hey, hey Brian. Uh, my... Laura does. I can see Laura really wants to share. Justin, hey, you want to share? My, uh, my two sons wanted to show their pictures that they drew on paper. Yes. Okay, All so right. this, is, this is Ethan's. If you can kind of see it. Oh, I love it. Oh, that is awesome. Ethan, you rock. And this is Connor's. Oh my gosh, that's awesome too. <laughs> Look at that chicken. But, oh my gosh, you guys Thanks are awesome. so much for doing this. This, this was awesome. Uh, we're yeah. going to head out now though. Okay, well thank you guys. Oh, oh he, he had a second one, sorry. Oh, geez, time for two? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thanks a lot. Yep, you guys rock. Anyone else want to share? I have, a, I have a question. Okay. What kind of, um, would this be similar if you were working on a Surface Pro? Yes. Well, you, would, you wouldn't be using Procreate because Procreate isn't available right. on a Surface Pro. You would right. do it in Photoshop or whatever. But yes, it would be exactly the same technique. Yep. Okay. Yep. Thanks. And Surface Pros aren't bad. No, they're well. They're, they're, they're not, not Apple, but they're okay. Yeah, they're 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 pretty good. They use the Wacom digitizer for their stylus, which is is a good quality stylus. So yeah. Yep. 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 Good Thank question. You. Yep. All right. Anyone else want to share? I think Sarah was trying to share, and we overlooked Sarah. her. Sarah, she had something cool. Let's see what Sarah. I, I did got. list it up before. Oh yeah. <laughs> you Oops. can see. It's like kind of got the little. Sarah drew the same thing using the same technique, and it looks like Sarah did it and not me. <laughs> That's got a little Ed, Ed, and Eddie going on there. Yeah, it I does. thought of that too afterwards. I love that chicken. Yeah. That chicken. That chicken needs its own story. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Thanks. Yeah, no, the editing thing too, I realized after I did that too, it's like three editing characters like combined into one, it seems like. I forget their names right now. Oh, shoot. Hello. Anyone else want to share? Anyone? Anyone have any crazy questions for our esteemed guest? All right. I have, I have a question. Can you send me this uh, image when you're done so we can show it in our cool newsletter? Heck yeah, I can. Thank you, George. Thanks everybody for coming out. I really appreciate it. This was really you guys fun. did really, really good. Thank you so much. This yeah. Beautiful. Dun, dun, dun. So I think if there's no more questions, we could end our fabulous evening today. Great. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me do this, George. This was a lot of fun. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. We have another Good night. one next week, I think. So <laughs> cool. Yeah. See you then. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye.